In late Cretaceous Asia, a herbivorous behemoth wandered the floodplains and forests of what is now China. With a powerful beak and a massive tail, it stood as the titan of the late Cretaceous. This was Shantungosaurus, and it was an absolute beast of a hadrosaur which could have stood head to head against any theropod and shoulder to shoulder with some sauropods. Shantungosaurus's size was definitely its most impressive aspect, with estimates suggesting that it reached lengths of up to 52 feet and weighed as much as 16 tons, with some exceptional individuals possibly reaching up to 18 tons. This makes it not only the largest hadrosaurid, but also one of the largest ornithischian dinosaurs, and at this weight, it would be about three times the size of an African elephant, and almost twice as large as an average Tyrannosaurus rex. Shantungosaurus possessed a robust and elongated body supported by strong pillar-like hind limbs and shorter forelimbs. Although comparatively its front limbs were much larger than other hadrosaurs, even its very close relative Edmontosaurus, to whom Shantungosaurus bore a striking resemblance, did not have forelimbs quite as robust. The creature's skull was elongated with a flattened snout, typical of duck-billed dinosaurs, and it was equipped with around 1,500 tightly packed teeth, which were continuously replaced throughout its life. These teeth were perfectly designed for grinding and processing the tough, fibrous plants of its time. Its long muscular tail provided balance and stability, especially when it was on two legs, a mode of movement which it could employ for short periods. The skin of Shantungosaurus was covered in scales, and there's evidence to suggest that some hadrosaurs had crests or fleshy combs on their heads. Although it's not clear if Shantungosaurus had a crest, it had anatomy surrounding its nostrils, leading many to believe it would have had unique soft tissue structures covering them. However, the size and form of these structures is totally unknown. Soft tissue is far less likely to be preserved in the fossil record, meaning they usually can only be surmised by their attachment points. The environment in which Shantungosaurus thrived was a vastly different world than what we know today. Characterized by a lush, verdant landscape during the late Cretaceous period, approximately 83 to 66 million years ago. The region that is now Shandong province in China, where the fossils of Shantungosaurus were discovered, was dominated by vast floodplains, meandering rivers and dense forests. These forests were teeming with a diverse range of flora, including conifers, ferns, cycads, and early flowering plants, which provided a rich food source for herbivorous dinosaurs. The climate was warm and humid, with seasonal variations that led to periods of heavy rainfall. Much of the flora and fauna of this environment was discovered from the Xingachuang Formation, located near Zhucheng in Shandong. This upper Cretaceous formation dates back to approximately 77.3 to 70 million years ago. In the vibrant ecosystem these fossils display, Shantungosaurus was far from alone, even if it was a standout. It shared its habitat with a plethora of other prehistoric creatures. Predatory theropod dinosaurs, such as the fearsome Zhucheng Tyrannus, which weighed around five tons, roamed these lands, posing a constant threat to herbivores. Alongside Shantungosaurus, other herbivorous dinosaurs like sauropods, ceratopsians, and smaller ornithopods browsed the landscape, each occupying a different ecological niche. These included ceratopsians like Cenoceratops, Zhucheng ceratops, and Ischioceratops, the sauropod giant Zhucheng titan, and the theropod Anomalipes, as well as thyreophorans like Synanchylosaurus and other reptilian fauna, including crocodilians and testudinates. The skies above were ruled by pterosaurs, magnificent flying reptiles with wingspans that could rival small aircraft. The water bodies were teeming with life too from ancient turtles and crocodilians previously mentioned to various species of fish. Insects like beetles, dragonflies, and early bees played crucial roles in pollination and as a food source for smaller vertebrates. This depiction of a rich ecosystem surrounding Shantungosaurus does definitely leave a question, however. That is, why did Shantungosaurus get so large? Its very close relative Edmontosaurus lived with T-Rex, a tyrannosaur close to twice as large as Zhuqing Tyrannus, yet it was much smaller, suggesting the predation was not the cause of its large size. One possibility is that the size is an adaptation to migration, allowing them to move more efficiently over great distances, 
This is an adaptation we see in modern baleen whales. However, the degree of seasonal variation in its environment has not indicated that this would be necessary. In combination, the difference in biomechanics make this less likely. It's also possible unique behaviors of the fauna would lead to this large size. For example, if Shantungosaurus was more solitary than Edmontosaurus, and Zucheng Tyrannus was much more social than Tyrannosaurus, implementing more complex group hunting behavior. However, these behaviors would be incredibly difficult to gleam from the fossil record, leaving this case of gigantism a mystery. We know more about Shantungosaurus reproduction than many other dinosaurs, as we can easily infer from other members of Saurolophinae. Assuming they reproduced similar to Myasaura, they would build a raised bowl-like structure off the ground, with a deep depression in the middle, and they would fill the depression with their eggs as well as vegetation, which as it was broken down by microorganisms, would warm their eggs and incubate them. The nest of Myasaura, a four-ton hadrosaur, was about six and a half feet wide and three feet tall at the edges, and are thought to have contained 30 to 40 eggs. The nest of Shantungosaurus would likely be even larger and could have held more eggs, depending on the size of their eggs, which is unknown. With a creature as imposing as Shantungosaurus, it only makes sense to discuss its combat ability. Despite its gigantic size, it would be able to stand and walk on its hind legs, and its noticeably robust forelimbs would have made trampling and stomping a fatal threat to the predators in its environment. Not to mention for its size, it would be pretty agile. Also, its large, muscular, and robust tail could have been quite a threat. Although it lacked any specific weapons like the tail club of Ankylosaurus, its sheer size would have made it a serious danger given the energy it would build up with movement. It would pose a threat to anything in its environment and could stand shoulder to shoulder with giants like T. rex in terms of sheer power. The largest hadrosaur ever is certainly an impressive title, and the owner does not disappoint. Shantungosaurus could only be described as a powerhouse, gigantic and agile. It was one of the most imposing beasts to ever walk the earth. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe, and if you have any thoughts, leave them in the comments below. Have a good day, everyone.